Normally within the first week or two of a game's launch, I like to talk about the best weapons in a game or something like that to give you a heads up on what weapons you should be using. But this year, admittedly, I kind of took a different approach with the absolute massive grind that is going to be gold camo for every single weapon. And then subsequently then platinum and Damascus as those diamond and dark matter level of camos. I ended up actually just doing it recently, just specific weapons to completion, and really I haven't played around with as many weapons as I'd really care to admit. Throughout the first week and a couple of days and change, I don't have the most well-versed catalog of weaponry under my belt and playtime with each of those, but the ones that I do, I have plenty of playtime with them. So today I wanted to give you guys three best classes here that I think can absolutely suit you tremendously well within this game and share with you guys some of the tips that I had for doing well with them. So, Today we're going to talk about the M4A1, the Kilo 141, as well as the AK-47. Three best class setups here with this that can help you hopefully do very well in your gameplay experiences if you try them out. So instead, if you guys firstly want to see any other class setups with any particular weapon, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. We'll see what we can cook up. And of course, if you guys are new, do be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things daily Modern Warfare content. But let's jump into the class setups. First things first, let's set some ground rules because all three of these classes do have the base shell the same pretty much it's kind of the primary weapons that we talk about though that will be slightly different and will have a different approach in some aspects but for the secondaries the perks the lethals and the tacticals truth be told i am pretty uniform across the board with all of that kind of stuff so what you'll see of course is pretty much similar in those aspects but the weapons themselves will differ and we'll really focus more so on what i like to do with the game and that's be a little bit more mobile be a little bit more quick to snap to an enemy whenever ADSing, so I'll go for those little pieces that can help me with that ADS speed. I can go for those pieces that will give me a little bit more mobility in terms of what I use to track down enemies and secure the kills. But let's start out with the M4A1, probably the weapon that you may see the most in Modern Warfare, and it's the weapon that I first got gold, and even still have the most time played with out of the weapons that I've tackled so far that I've started to work on. Like we just talked about, I wanted to build a class setup here and a weapon attachment loadout that allowed me to have the mobility and freedom to be able to snap to enemies and move around but also still carry that damage even at a range at a distance is something that whenever i'm playing ground war it does help out a lot i could be across a map and secure a long shot kill i could be up close and personal get that gun up fast for an engagement and get my shots off first so to do this i crafted the m4 with a stock m16 grenadier barrel i ended up opting for no stock which even though in theory you remove a stock, it still counts as an attachment here because it's a modification. I ended up running the perk of sleight of hand on this weapon. I ended up running the stippled grip tape for the rear grip and the Merc foregrip under barrel. Now to break down a little bit further these weapon modification choices, when we talk about it, maybe ironically to choose the stock M16 Grenadier barrel over the 11 and a half commando barrel might not be the most logical choice, but it does make sense whenever you consider the longer range that I wanted to tackle as well. The Commando Barrel offers an increase in the ADS speed and movement speed, but the M16 Barrel offers a damage range increase, bullet velocity increase, and increase in recoil control. Where I was tackling some of the handling and things like the grip tape and also the stock, this I felt comfortable tackling some damage range here with this to modify the barrel for that one. Now the stock choice, I ended up choosing the No Stock over the Forge Tac CQS, simply because it offered a little bit more in terms of the positives. Sure, the downsides may have some drawbacks in that recoil control and aiming stability, but to me, I personally feel like the M4 has the easiest recoil pattern to control. So the no stock to add a little bit more benefit while naturally being able to control some of the downsides felt like a no brainer to me. Sleight of hand, I just like reloading faster, gets me the action a little bit quicker, though to be fair, frangible wounding is also a fantastic choice that allows to inflict a wounding effect on your enemies when they're tagged by your shots. Then the stippled grip tape is something that allows me to, again, increase that ADS speed and sprint to fire speed, which is absolutely crucial especially if you're in that tactical double sprint that's something that comes in huge handy and of course with the ads speeds not necessarily being the best all around i want to get that up as much as possible and then that merc foregrip allows me to end up having a little bit more in that recoil control and from a little testing for what i want to get it out of 
felt a little bit better than that of the Ranger foregrip. Secondary perks, lethals, and tactical discussion. Honestly, you're going to see a lot of this stuff again here with this. Secondary, I run an overkill of an MP5. To me, overkill is the real only first perk selection that is even worthwhile. I end up running ammunition all the time as my field order, so I don't necessarily need scavenger. Double time is cool, but I don't find myself really ever needing to double sprint for a longer period of time or jumping back into it unless I'm playing ground war and I'm spawning at the very back of the map or something like that. Overkill always comes in handy to me because you end up having the fabled cod adage of switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. And if you're in the thick of it, well, why wouldn't you want to have another primary as your secondary? Obviously, it can do a lot more damage than a pistol. So to me, I end up running the MP5 and I usually run when I have this maxed out, which I haven't had it maxed out, a different loadout. But for this, across the board, a perk of frangible wounding, the rubberized grip tape and the commando foregrip to, of course, help with aiming and recoil stability and, of course, recoil control on both of those attachments and then frangible wounding to not allow my enemies to get away without having to take a couple extra seconds to reheal. Naturally, that'll of course have more attachments as I rank it up, but again, I've been focusing more so on some specific rifles to get those done camo challenge wise and all, but that's the stuff that I'll run on it here with this. Second perk I'll end up running because it is so broken, that of Ghost. Of course, I won't be the one sitting in the corner with it, but I do like to stay off the radar when I am on the go and am on the run and trying to get behind enemies to end up getting some picks. I end up running Amped as a third perk so that I can swap my weapons faster than normal if I do need to. And of course, when I will occasionally run the regular rocket launcher to go for a tank on the hillside or something like that, I can reload it a little bit faster. That said, though, it's followed up by and completing the loadout with a lethal of a frag grenade and a tactical of a flash grenade. But then we'll jump over to the Kilo 141, the next weapon that I've been using a lot of. That will end up having maxed out attachments naturally here at this one. Since we have gotten it gold, we've completed it. We're max level and all. But with this, I end up running the 16.6 SOCOM barrel, the Syngard Arms Sniper Pro stock, the sleight of hand perk, the stippled grip tape on its rear grip, and of course, the Ranger for grip on the under barrel as well. This follows very similarly in terms of the M4A1 loadout here with this, in which the 16.6 SOCOM barrel will offer more in damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control, while sacrificing a little bit in that ADS speed. The stock for this one, though, I ended up adjusting just because the recoil pattern is a little different than the M4A1, so I ended up opting for a little bit more aiming stability rather than quick movement here at this one, and because I feel like the Kilo is a little bit lighter weight than the M4 even, which says a bit because the M4 is quite a mobile weapon weapon to begin with. Perk of sleight of hand, obviously, for that reload quickness, the stippled grip tape for that ADS and sprint to fire speed increase, and then also that ranger foregrip as well, giving a little bit more recoil control and aiming stability for a little bit of a sacrifice in that ADS move speed. For the Kilo, it's a little bit different of a vision for the overall class setup, sure, but still relatively comparable to that of the M4A1, but it definitely shreds in its own right. Personally, I'd say that two of the easiest to use and easiest to jump into rifles in this game Game are the M4A1 as well as the Kilo 141. You have weapons like your Odin or your AK-47 or even your Scar that offer a decent damage per shot, but have a little bit of other properties at its base that make it a little bit tougher to jump in and use and dominate immediately. But the Kilo 141 and the M4 definitely don't have a problem with that one. As with the other, again, base shell of this class loadout, we run the perks of Overkill, Ghost, and Amped with a secondary of, again, that same MP5 loadout and a lethal and tactical of a frag and flash grenade. For the AK-47, rounding off our third weapon here up on deck, this one is a little bit tougher to control, but it is something that has an insane damage output for a rifle, it seems. So for this one, we kind of tailored it a little bit towards that mobility, but also wanted to make sure that we had have a little bit more stability also. So for this, we end up running on the barrel, the Spetsnaz Elite. We end up running, because I'm not a huge fan of the iron sights of the AK at range, close quarters, I'm not really too terribly upset with them, but I end up trying to engage as many mid to longer range engagements as I possibly can a lot of the times. But we end up running the Viper Reflex Optic. We end up running the close quarters stock. We end up running the stippled grip tape rear grip and also the Ranger foregrip under barrel on this one. So for the Spetsnaz Elite Barrel, bringing this down a little bit further, it doesn't offer as much as the RPK barrel. It ends up having the same increase in damage range and bullet velocity, but not that recoil control 
but I also at the same time don't sacrifice any movement speed. So that's something that I wanted to take into consideration where we're not being bogged down as much by a little bit heavier of an attachment, but for the Viper Optic, like we talked about, again, just a little bit more precise aiming than that of the Iron Sights. The stock, the close quarter stock is definitely in contention with the Forge Tack Ultralight or even the Skeleton stock, but I felt like the close quarter stock felt the best out of the three whenever I was using them. That may be all placebo, but it is something that personal feel, I like the close quarter stock a little bit more. Then for the stippled grip tape, again, offering an increase to that ADS speed and sprint to fire speed and the Ranger 4 grip of the recoil control and aiming stability. So kind of rounding out again, a little bit more of a all around range, plus also control and mobility all in one loadout. The AK definitely does have a nice damage profile. So if you rank it up and you get to this, we recommend running this class setup again, mixed with, of course, our skeleton shell of the MP5, Overkill, Ghost, Amped, Frag Grenade, and also a tactical of a Flash Grenade. So, like I said, I'm kind of uniform in how I approach my class setups, obviously, with how much of a base shell there is, but that said, each of these weapons we discussed, I think, can really help you out if you play a even just semi-aggressive playstyle. Might not be your best if you're the one that sits in the corner and ADS the door for five minutes, but if you like to move around, if you like to get in the action, I think that all of these class loadouts for these specific weapons can definitely help you get some engagements under your belt that maybe you wouldn't have won otherwise. So that said, that's we're going to wrap it up. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Firstly, again, is there any weapon in particular that you would like to see me feature in a class setup? Anything that you guys would like a tailored loadout for? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, best class setups like this, anything we got you covered here on the channel. So hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Practice live on both those so if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.